It is April 8th, 2024. The date that's been marked on the calendar since August 21st, 2017, the last time the United States experienced a total solar eclipse. In 2017, we mistakenly thought being in 99.5% totality would be good enough, and we were very disappointed. So we decided then to make the trip in 2024 to see the solar eclipse in full totality. So here I am, heading towards southern Illinois. Don't be fooled by the apparent lack of traffic. I'm about to hit a big traffic jam at this exit, and I'll be taking several detours along my 110 mile journey to avoid the crush of people heading for the same place that I'm going to. And my first of a few detours will be through the city of Columbia, Illinois, not far from St. Louis. There was either an accident on the main road or the traffic volume is just too much and the lights might not be timed right. But going through this shot detour through downtown will save about 10 minutes according to Google Maps. And just like that, back on the main highway, but still a lot of traffic heading for the path of totality. It's about 9.30 a.m. right now and the eclipse starts at about 12.45. We're now bypassing the city of Redbud, and apparently a few people have the same alerts on Google Maps because I'm thinking this road probably gets very little traffic at all. There's not even any lane strips on this road. It's about 10 a.m. now, and I have about 82 miles to go, so I'm getting a little worried. I do have three hours, but I do have one good sized city ahead of me before reaching the, my final destination. Hey guys, it's Emily. Welcome everyone. Thankfully, I did scope out some potential cities where I want to see the eclipse today. I'm headed to the city of Anna, which is about 15 miles south of Carbondale, which is going to be very packed. Carbondale will probably have 200,000 people viewing the eclipse there, most likely at Southern Illinois University. The actual population of that city is only 20,000, so you know the traffic will be horrible not just leaving, but getting there as well. I'm hoping Anna will be as bad, and the good news is it will have the same 4 plus minutes of totality. In the forecast, mostly clear skies with a high of 75 degrees could get any better than that. I've waited 7 long years to see this eclipse, and now the day is here. Let's go! I'm now about 50 miles away and I just passed through the city of Chester, home of the cartoonist that created Popeye. Check out my Chester video on YouTube. Traffic has gotten much better and there's the Mississippi River beyond the trees. It's now about 11.30 and I'm just 15 miles away from Anna. Most of the rest of the traffic I saw turned off toward Carbondale, but it looks like smooth sailing from here. Thank goodness. And I've arrived in Anna. Some very high clouds in the sky, but I think they'll burn off. Let's check out a map of Illinois real quick to see where Anna is. Anna is located in the southern end of the state, about 10 to 15 miles south of Carbondale, where much larger crowds will be. Carbondale will have the same amount of totality as Anna, about 4 minutes and 8 seconds. The yellow line is the center point of the totality track. And you see Carbondale on the one side and Anna on the other. I'm okay, gonna get something to eat at this McDonald's since I have 15 minutes before the eclipse starts and 2 hours until totality. It's 11.57 according to Bank Marquee. And many businesses are shutting their doors at noon so people can watch the eclipse. Not much traffic here at all, but just a good place. Before I go any further, let's talk about how I decided on Southern Illinois to watch the eclipse. A couple of days ago, we flew into Minneapolis, and the intention was to finish the vacation in Dallas, Texas. We were going to watch the eclipse at a Bucky's in Terrell, which is an eastern suburb of Dallas. The day after we arrived in Minneapolis, we were in Iowa, and we saw the forecast for Dallas. It was getting much worse, with a 70% chance of cloud cover and increased rate for storms. So while we were in Iowa, we contacted our rental company and changed our drop-off destination from Love Field in Dallas to the Atlanta airport. The change only cost us $14, which was a great deal. 
Also, since we're now driving home instead of flying from Love Field on Southwest, we got a credit for the airfare to use on later travel plans. So glad everything worked out. I'm watching the eclipse at Anna City Park. This is a large park and there are lots of people here. Probably hundreds of people. The current conditions of the park, mostly clear, low 70s. A perfect day for watching an eclipse. It's not too busy yet, some people are starting to drive in, but there are some families here playing games, and a couple of people are setting up their cameras. I'm near the baseball diamonds and the disc golf course. It's now about 12.45pm and the eclipse has just begun. Can you tell the eclipse has started? Neither can I, so let's take a look through the special glasses. Now I can see a little piece of the sun is missing on the right hand side. It's now about 1pm and a few more people have showed up. No real change in temperature or brightness, however those thin clouds I saw earlier are burning off so it looks like the skies will be completely clear which is fantastic. About 10 minutes later we're about 48 minutes away from totality. It's still great weather, not much of a breeze, not too humid. It's still not a whole lot of activity yet. I don't know if people are planning to show up right up before totality. Also, there are still very few clouds, and it's still not a real change in how bright it is outside. The forecast called for the temperature to drop by 3 degrees during totality. Taking a look through the special camera lenses, and a little bit more of the sun is missing. It's looking more like Pac-Man. I'll be checking conditions every 5 minutes or so since we're about 43 minutes away from totality. Looking through the special camera lenses and the sun is looking more and more like Pac-Man. This reminds me of 2017 when I was home and looking through the, at the sun's shape through my eclipse glasses. People are beginning to stream in now. Also, I noticed this parking lot has many different vehicles from many different states. There are more people walking around now and getting their preferred viewing place on the grass or even on the baseball diamonds near me. It's definitely not as crowded by any means, but there are more people than there were when we got here half an hour ago. Now I'm at 1.20, just 38 minutes from totality. Let's take another quick look at the sun. There's even more of a Pac-Man look to the sun. It's getting pretty exciting for sure. I'm hoping the camera equipment we brought will take a great video of the eclipse. I'm not a professional photographer, so I hope I do a good job. In addition to my Osmo Pocket 3 camera, which I'm filming on now, here's what else I brought. Here's my polarizer lenses, which I'll put in front of my old Sony 4K camera. The Sony camera has more zoom than the Osmo Pocket 3, and the polarizer should take out a lot of the manufactured light in the video. And here's the Sony ZV-1, which is my first 4K camera that I got a few years ago. I got an attachment that allows me to place the polarizer in front. My only concern is the zoom will put too much pixelation, but maybe I can clean up the video in post-production. And to get the Pac-Man views of the sun, I have this special filter. It materials as the eclipse glasses. It takes out all the harmful light and leaves that orange color that shows the sun safely. And it goes without saying that we all have the eclipse glasses. We got the eclipse filter and, and a 5 pack of glasses from Amazon a few weeks ago. And the filter has come in very handy. I'm glad we got it. The parking lot is really filled up now, so anyone heading to it right now is going to have a hard time finding a space. There's still not many people outside quite yet. About 5 minutes later, and a little over half an hour until totality. It's getting close now. Just a little bit more activity outside, more people looking through their eclipse glasses. 
I still don't see much of a change in the sun brightness, and I check the temperature, and it's 74 degrees right now. Hear that old 1980s song, because the sun has Pac-Man fever. This might be peak Pac-Man right now. I'm so glad I changed my plans, because the weather is perfect here in Southern Illinois. About 22 minutes away from totality, and it feels just a little cooler out. The sky is starting to get dim a little bit, and I'm starting to hear birds and crickets, like you would normally hear in the sunsets. Look at the sun now. It's definitely past Pac-Man look and heading toward the sliver look to it. It's getting really close now. Really exciting. You can feel the energy from the people here. 18 minutes to totality and it has continued to get cooler outside. It feels like sunset now. The skies are continuing to get slightly more dark. Not a lot, but definitely noticeable. Also, there are more people walking around or sitting in the grass waiting for totality. Definitely more excitement at Anna City Park. A little under 12 minutes until totality. Things are changing very quickly now. I'm noticing a definite coolness in the air. The sun is almost out of sliver. I think this will be the last update from the eclipse filter looking at the sun. I'd rather capture the increasing energy from the people around me, what the actual sky looks like, and definitely get my cameras ready for totality. Check this out. Everything has that dusky look to it. It also sounds like sunset, doesn't it? The birds are chirping. I'm sorry to hear some crickets. I think we're about done with the people coming in. This is much better than the madhouse they're experiencing in Carbondale, just 10 miles north of here. Now 8 minutes from totality, the skies are a little darker, not a lot darker, just a little bit. It's continuing to feel cooler, so I guess the weather forecast was right about the temps dropping by 3 degrees. Looks like a lot of people are sitting in the baseball field, so very few clouds. Gonna be a great show. Have you ever seen a total eclipse? What did you think? Was it as amazing as others have said? Was it an emotional or spiritual event for you? Please leave a comment. We're almost there, about 5 minutes to totality. I really felt the energy of the people around me. All the anticipation of what this eclipse will look like. Even though it's not a lot of people, it's still a good number of people for where I am, with a population of about 4,000 people. About 3 minutes until totality, right now it looks as dim as it got when I saw the last eclipse in 2017. I remember at this point in my house 7 years ago, these were the conditions when it reached 99.5% totality. This was as good as it got back then. This is what it looks like at 2 minutes until totality. Everyone's ready for the big event. Definitely feels like sunset. Here it is, the last minute before totality. Everyone is outside looking. In a few seconds it will be safe to take off the eclipse glasses and look at totality with naked eyes. So here we go. This is unbelievable. It got completely dark all of a sudden, and this video cannot do the eclipse justice. 
The lighter on the moon is much thinner than the camera is showing. This is what it looks like at the park right now. It is dark. With just a little orange lightness on the horizon. Awesome and unbelievable. I wish I saw this seven years ago, but glad to see it today. That gun fire indicates we're halfway through totality. The video is from the Sony ZV-1, which has a good zoom on it. I dropped the ISO to 400, which I think was too high. Looking with my eyes, I didn't see any red color around the surface of the moon, but the camera is picking up red for some reason. I did see some great images where solar flares were shown from a very high resolution camera, but I doubt my camera is picking up the flares. Here's a up close from my DJI Osmo Pocket 3. I dropped the maximum ISO down to 200, so I wouldn't see too much artificial light. The gimbal is correcting all the shakiness, but there is not much zoom on the camera. It's still a great picture, even in the dark. So again, I have to give props to my new camera. A little over four minutes later, here comes the sun. Wow. Just wow. What an amazing experience. And just like that, we're back to daylight. As quick as it was going from the dim sky to the darkness, it's just as quick going from the darkness back to what you would expect a little after two in the afternoon. This is really wild. Daytime to nighttime to daytime. What an incredible day. I think everyone in the city of Park enjoyed the eclipse as much as we did. This is an emotional experience as well. We checked the temperature as we left and it was 69 degrees. The temperature cooled about 5 degrees during the eclipse. But real quick, I want to demonstrate how I went from daylight to the darkness. Just before totality, it looked like this. And probably 10 seconds later, it looked like this, like the sun had set 30 minutes ago. It was that sudden. It was a really strange experience, like my whole body got covered with a blanket. I'm not sure if it even came out on video, but I think I saw a couple stars in the sky. Then right after totality ended, around 2.03, the sky changed and it looked like this. I didn't stick around and wait for the eclipse to end completely. I thought it was a good idea to head for the interstate and head home. The drive home was... interesting. This is what much of the interstate drive was like from when I got on Interstate 24 just north of Metropolis. I found this thinking the backups would be limited to this area, and I was so wrong. Traffic almost came to a stop when I reached Paducah, Kentucky. In fact, it was so bad I had to get off the interstate and onto the scariest bridge in America. This bridge was bad enough without a lot of traffic, but with a lot of traffic, it's horrifying. And Google Maps did not accurately show all the backups that I drove through. But I will say I did fare better than a lot of people if I left from Carbondale. I probably would have been on the highway a lot longer. Overall, the drive home took 9 hours, which is 2 hours longer than usual. The traffic was very bad all the way to Nashville, so we had to take many detours that paralleled I-24. We stopped at a rest area in between Nashville and Chattanooga at around 9 p.m. Central Time. The rest area had a map of the current traffic patterns all around Tennessee. Would you believe the traffic was still really bad from Carbondale to Nashville? That's insane. I finally got home around 12.15 a.m., and it could have been much worse if we didn't take some back roads. Oh, and here's some irony. Remember how we are going to fly home from Dallas? Well, the flight ended up being delayed an hour. So if we saw the eclipse in Dallas and flew out of Love Field, we would have gotten home at around 11.30. Not much of a time difference at all, and I have flight credits to use later. I was really shocked at how emotional this was, especially for my parents, who said this might be their only opportunity to see a total eclipse. They were really glad they got to see it. The next chance for a total solar eclipse is a small area around Montana in 2044. However, there will be an eclipse in 2045. That will be over Orlando, which will be interesting. I wonder if I have children, then they'll beg me to go see the eclipse at Disney World. Park tickets will probably be $1,000 a day by then, but we'll see. And that's it for my video on the 2024 solar eclipse. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.
Thanks for watching. Bye.